Now this will be a fun one, with two kick-ass leader bikes sitting in the shop right now and a few guest starring in videos lately, we've seen a lot of high horsepower squid missiles on the show. The unenlightened among you might just think that they're all the same, but in reality, there's lots of different shapes and sizes of leader bikes and today we're going to find out which one is right for you. That's right, I've managed to squeeze out seven different types of leader bikes out of a crop of super bikes and a few from the past. I guess it's more accurate to say that I've identified seven different kinds of leader bike riders, but that's besides the point. And how 2017 yammy is that? We're in the future now. After today, you'll know exactly what kind of bike you should be looking to start on. Just kidding, none of these are starter bikes. We all know that the correct choice is a turbo Hayabusa. Speaking of which, have you subscribed yet? The videos are literally ready to go, people. We have a five-part video docu-series. They're sitting on the channel, unlisted. We'll make them public as soon as we take over one million. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Anyway, let's hit the ground running with the first sort of leader bike, and that's the one for the street-only leader bike rider. Believe it or not, there are people who ride leader bikes and don't ever take them to the track. I know it makes me sad too, but some people are just deeply confused or okay paying for speeding tickets, I guess. If you're riding a leader bike on the street, I couldn't think of a worse bike than the modern crop of leader bikes. They're super uncomfortable, hot, and you'll never want to be going fast enough to use the tech. For this sort of rider, I would actually recommend the Honda CBR 1000 RR from 2008 to 2017. This bike basically ran forever unchanged because Honda took one look at their bike and thought, good enough. It was packing a 998cc inline 4 putting down 175 horsepower and 84 foot pounds of torgos. Meh, but Yami, I want a 200 horsepower bike. 175 isn't fast enough. I don't want my dad to be disappointed in me. I need to show everyone how big my PP is. It's okay, hey, look at me, hey, hey, look. Papa Yam's gonna tell you a secret. You know how the speed limit on the highway is 70 miles per hour? Yeah, any leader bike ever made is gonna be able to double that in the blink of an eye. The 2010 CBR could do a quarter mile in 10.3 seconds flat and hit 180 miles an hour. I'm gonna get real with y'all spec sheet simps out there for a moment. Have you actually ever ridden a motorcycle before, let alone a leader bike? They're all gonna warp your perception of speed. Who cares if it's not putting down 200 at the wheel? Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox for today and get back on the CBR. Now, it's still a leader bike with a high 32.3 inch seat height and clip-ons, but the CBR line has always had a reputation as the relaxed quote-unquote super sport. It's always been the bike that you wanna take out and ride for long periods of time, especially the older blades. Comparing to bikes like the R1 and the ZX10, you could actually commute on this bike without wanting to die. And while you're commuting on your leader bike, you'll need to have a spot to put your phone. Luckily, the folks over at Rockform have you covered. They make the best phone mount and case combo for your bike. They've got handlebar mounts and steering stem mounts just in case you're on a sport bike but still want to know where you're going because as it turns out, getting lost is a bit of a bummer. But you already knew all about that because what you might not know is that Rockform has gotten into the wallet game. They've got a new low profile wallet made out of aerospace aluminum with RFID blocking tech and room for all your cards and cash in a small package. The best part is if you've got your phone in a rock form case, you can pop the wallet on the back of your phone thanks to the power of magnets and have them in one place. It sounds like a gimmick, but you'd be surprised how often it'll come in handy. Click the link down below and use the code YN25 for 25% off your order. And while you're there, don't forget to check out their whole range of products because they're making more than just phone cases. Big shout out to Rock Farm for sponsoring today's video and making sure there's more leader bike squids out in the world. Number two on today's list is for the weekend warrior. Someone rides their bike on the street on the weekend and takes it out to the track for fun. They're not looking to set new personal bests each time and hit perfect apexes. They just want to go out and feel like a superhero. For that person, I would recommend the Yamaha R1. If you're this kind of rider, you're probably a little bit older with some disposable income and spare time and you want a bike to make you feel alive between filing TPS reports and weekly staff meetings. Well, I can say that when I first took our giveaway R1 out to the track, I thought that leader bikes were overkill and you really didn't need anything more powerful than a 600. After my first few laps, I found myself making the case for a leader bike in my stable just as a track toy. The R1 is powered by Yamaha's 998cc crossplane inline 4 that honestly makes one of the best sounds in all of motorcycling, and a solid 197 horsepower and 82 foot-pounds of Torgarinamos. It's such a sweet ride, and once you get the suspension set for your weight, you'll be able to hit the track and have fun. The bike's packing a ton of top-shelf suite of technology and rider aids, including traction control, cornering ABS, wheelie control, and so much more while you're out there railing the bike. It'll keep you safe-ish. 
it's possible to completely outride the safety equipment on this bike, so don't hold it at wide open throttle and dump the clutch at a stoplight or come sailing into a hairpin at 100, hoping the ABS and traction will save you. They're most likely there to tame the power at the rear wheel. Though again, if you're looking at this bike, chances are you're not a hooligan. You want to go have fun on the weekend once or twice in the month, and the R1 is perfect for that. If you want to ride on the street, you can get by with any R1, but if you want a track bike, you can find well-sorted R1s from track junkies and not have to spend a dime on mods. Highly recommend you going with the Crossplane 2009 Plus, or if you're feeling really patrician, the 2015 Plus that looks the absolute business still to this day. Oh, number three today is going to be our one and only bike for spec sheet simps. Yes, unfortunately, they do make a bike designed just for someone wanting to sit there and shout numbers at each other like they're playing PvP in World of Warcraft or something. Uh, my engine is 999cc and your only is a 998. I win. You've probably already guessed the bike, but it's the BMW S1000 RR. Only a German manufacturer would be so exact in their designs to make a bike with 207 horsepower and 83 foot-pounds of Torgos without any decimal places because they know that horsepower sells. It's a completely soulless husk of cold aluminum and plastic controlled by an unthinking and unfeeling computer that is one of the most sophisticated bikes on the road. Look guys, I'm being a little bit harsh, but I've ridden this bike a few different times from a few different years, both on road and on track, and it's just kind of that case of it's so good it's boring. Everything is perfectly buttoned up and perfectly tuned, and the throttle is just perfectly set up, which is nice, sure, but it doesn't just have any character, it doesn't feel alive. It's just a vehicle that doesn't feel special or unique, it's just sort of there. It's also super expensive. Yeah, you can get a base model S1000RR for 16995 but let's be honest, if you're walking into a BMW dealer, you're not going to get some pleb base model garbage. No, you're going to walk out with the full Zoot $20,000 bike and a BMW motor rad hat so you can flex on all the normies out there on their Japanese leader bikes. If that's what you want out of your leader bike experience, then more power to you, I suppose. Oh, and speaking of power, I've heard that from the guys at Motivation with an exhaust and a tune, you immediately pick up 30 extra wheel horsepower, so there's that. Number four is for the track day elitist. You're the sort of person who can only ride at the best of the best of the best of the best and you'll have no substitute. You show up at a track day at Kota with an air-conditioned toy hauler and practically uncrate your bike there at the track. You've got tire warmers, lap timers, and all the gizmos and gadgets, and then you roll out with the group one riders and complain about everyone else is holding you back from moving up. For you, there's only one motorcycle that will do, and it's the Honda CBR 1000 RR SB Fireblade R R. R, R. It will never not be funny how many R's Honda crammed into this bike. But yeah, I mean, wouldn't this person be riding on a Super Legera or a V4R? Yeah, maybe, but honestly, at this point, they're kind of interchangeable. They'll just pick the bike that's the closest to the team's bike and GP. Peko fans are on the V4R, Marquez fans are on the CBR, Fabio fans on the R1M, and Oliveira fans are probably on a CBR too, since KTM doesn't make a leader bike anymore. You're probably going to drop anywhere from three dollars to $40,000 on a motorcycle, so you can LARP as a GP rider. You'll hop off the track, chart your lap times, check your pressures, sip some sports drink from your branded Yeti mug, and then head back from another three lap session. Yes, nine minutes on the track. What an experience. Am I jealous that you have all that stuff and I have to give away the Fireblade in a few months? Maybe, but that's not important. Number five is the bike for the degenerates out there. Yeah, you already know which one it is. It's the Suzuki Jixxer 1000, baby, but which one? Well, if you're a true simp, then there's only one Jixxer that matters, and that's the 05K5 Jixxer Thou, baby. Did you stretch it? Did you lower it? Do you have a NOS kit on there? How about an airbrush naked ladies on the gas tank? Yeah, you thought that only boosted boys had no taste. Nope, it's a disease that afflicts anyone with the Suzuki key in their pocket. Myself, Spite, and Josh included. I mean, have you seen the Jixxer 250? Just you wait, Spite is ordering a wrap for it right now that will go down in history as the worst mod ever made to any motorcycle ever in the world. Except maybe for 650 Ebe's swing arm stretch on the V4R. That might be the worst thing ever. Sorry, Abe. But maybe you're a normal human with 23 pairs of chromosomes and maybe you just have really, really good leader bike in your garage. Then you really can't go wrong with the modern Jixxer. It's putting down 199 horsepower out of its 999cc in line four. It's only missing a couple farkles from the other bikes out there, but who cares? You're gonna pay 15,599. You're probably gonna obliterate all the other bikes around a racetrack. You'll also happen to be doing it on a bike wrapped in Ahigao. Let's be real. Number six today is for the art lovers out there, the kind of person who can sit in the gallery for an hour just admiring the brush strokes on a single work of art and then pay much too much money to have it shipped back to your personal collection. For you, there's only one right bike, and that's the 2006 MV Agusta F4 1000R. I mean, just take a minute to look at this motorcycle. It's the perfect mix of red, black, and gold. The lines are cut and shaped perfectly. The undertail exhaust is just the icing on the cake. 
For better or for worse, MV has always done their own thing, foregoing racing and just making super cool looking motorcycles that are eye catching to riders and cagers alike, but only a rider with a truly sophisticated palette can understand what riding one of these bikes is truly like. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but that's not the point. At 998 cc's, it's putting down 174 horsepower and 81 foot-pounds of torgos out of its inline four, but you buy one of these bikes because you enjoy having to explain to people that, oh, no, it's not a Ducati. It's an MV Agosta. Your favorite phrase is, you just wouldn't understand it. And you have a great relationship with the guy who runs your local MV repair shop because there's no way in hell you're doing the work yourself. Rounding out the list today, leader bikes for a rider who has foregone all pretense of lap times and just wants to haul ass in a straight line. You just want to own a legendary piece of motorcycling history. It's the Gen 1 Hayabusa! Shut up! Yes, you in the comments right now trying to say that a 1300cc sport bike's not a leader bike. It's over 1000cc's, and if you count an RSV4, you're gonna have to count this. Are modern leader bikes faster? Yes. Has technology left the Busa behind? Yeah, sure. But who cares? When you're out on a Busa at night on the highway, weaving between cars with the twin analog tack and speedo lit with the old school faded orange light, you know that you're on an apex predator motorcycle. The godlike rush of torque is like nothing you've ever experienced, and then Wait a second, what's that sound? Is that a turbo spinning up underneath you? Did you just hit boost? Why is the world around you warping and shaking? What is that ghostly choir singing in the background? Is that the Stargate? And then you watch your entire life pass in the blink of an eye, and you stare into the vast emptiness of the galaxy through the eyes of the star child and realize that nothing, literally nothing, could be as fast. You can die happy now, knowing you've lived a full and complete life, yeeting a turbo busa, as I have. You should subscribe. Fact, before he wrote Goosebumps, R.L. Stein wrote the jokes for Bazooka Joe Gum Rappers. Dream big. Goodbye. Well, 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 my little squid, you've made it to the end of yet another Yammy Noob video. Thank you so much for watching. Just for you, got a little treat for you right over here. Brand new video for you. You can watch it, check it out. There's probably some squidding, some street riding, maybe some track riding. Maybe I'm bending my Ducati off-road. Who knows what's going on in that video? You should probably click on it and find out.